Good morning, and welcome to our service of morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Thus saith the High and Lofty One that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. I hope you're comfortably placed this morning. I hope you have a beautiful place to sit and listen to what God is saying in Holy Scripture. Dearly beloved, the Scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the Te Deum Laudamus. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee, the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee, the noble army of martyrs praise thee. The Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. 
and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The Gospel this morning is once again from the Gospel of Mark, beginning at verse 14. King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead, and for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and the leaders of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask of me, I will give you, even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately, the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head he went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When the disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. The challenge of this morning's Gospel is that we're confronted with a a outright image of what evil looks like and and we're given a contrast between two kingdoms the positioning of this story is in contrast to um, is in contrast to all the kingdom teaching that Jesus has done thus far and so now we're given this image of uh, a court King Herod it's actually just a tetrarch, but uh, King Herod's kingdom. And it's one that's full of corruption that we understand. He, he, actually, he actually respects John the Baptist. He actually likes him. He's been listening to him in kind of a fearful fashion. You know, like when, when somebody really knows, um, wow, this person has something to say. This person is on to something. So he has this, this level of respect and fear for John the Baptist. And yet 
he has a personal weakness in that when he's asked to murder him, he would rather save face than not murder him. And so he gives in to peer pressure, in a sense, you know, if kings can suffer that. Um, he gives in to peer pressure and he does that which he knows to be wrong. And his conscience is really bothering him. He's convinced that Jesus is John the Baptist come back, you know, with a vengeance, so to speak, in the form of Jesus. And we see, we see different levels of corruption. We see um, the vengeance that Herodias would like to take. Um, she would rather be, um, she would rather sanitize the whole story by silencing John the Baptist. And we see the evil of foolishness, right? The daughter is manipulated and she does so willingly and gladly and she's a party to she's a party to this murder. And so here we are and we have to come to grips with why these two kingdoms are thus um, contrasted in the gospel. There are structural cues in the gospel of Mark which tell us which tell us what's going on, so to speak, and, and what's, what we are to focus upon. And here we're supposed to focus upon what the difference in these kingdoms actually is. And the striking thing that I see is that Jesus is going to be king. He is indeed our king of, you know, king of the body so to speak we are all members of his body he's going to be king but he's going to do it radically differently he's not going to do it through violence he's not going to do it through political um, machinations he's not he's not going to be subversive he is going to be king by being a servant. He is going to serve God's will and he's going to do so by pouring out his life. So on the one hand, um, this story is showing us what evil looks like and we really recognize it. You know, we, we, we recognize all of these types of evil. We recognize um, when people are too ashamed to be good we recognize um, when people are too foolish and we recognize when people are um, controlling. And, and here Jesus is and he's going to show us an example. He's going to show us a radical example and he is going to die for exactly these. Um, he, he dies for Herod so that those that have committed sins such as these can be redeemed. He dies for Herodias so that those so ashamed and controlling um, have a chance at redemption. He dies for these. He dies for the foolish, for the daughter that gets manipulated into evil and he dies for us because regardless of how well churched we are or how much effort we put into it we are still not who we ought to be we are still not where god would have us his image of who we are to be and and become is radically different than we can ask or imagine and so today as we move through morning prayer, and we went through all of those positioning readings, we were positioning ourselves to recognize the difference in these kingdoms. When we said, um, thus sayest the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, I dwell in the high and lofty place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit we were beginning to position ourselves as 
um, people of the kingdom, people who serve one king, and that is Christ. And then we move through the movement to confession. We have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. Every, all of those movements have been positioning ourselves so that we would, we, we would, despite the fact that we recognize Herod and Herodias and, and all of those weaknesses, despite the fact that we recognize that, we are nonetheless, through our redemption, aligning ourselves with the kingdom. And so there's that tension of what we know and what we hope for in Christ and Christ's promises for us. Jesus is this radical, um, a radical leader. He's, he's the sort of leader that kneels into the problem. And so evil is, evil is the great problem and death is the great problem. And it is exactly that which he in his radical movement towards that he actually um, that he actually eliminates for us by entering death he destroys it and he shows us the resurrected life ironically um, Herod has a sense that a return from the dead is possible. It's, it's really quite ironic. The sad thing about this story is that we are not shocked by it. We have been desensitized in a, in a sense by the media that we expose ourselves to. You know, like murder, murder mysteries are kind of a normal kind of thing that we enter into. And um, the, the other shocking thing is that it, it seems quite normal to us. But there's a reality beyond that which we are comfortable with. And that reality is the, the radical love that Jesus shows us. He goes to that deepest pain and that deepest betrayal in humanity he goes to the place of murder and he shows us that his life supersedes these evils and it supersedes them for our benefit. My prayer for you this week, when you think about the horror of what Jesus entered, my prayer for you this week is that you know that it was for you. That for all your mistakes and for all your failings, he kneeled in to see you and to redeem you. That was his first joy and that was his intention. May that thought be a blessing to you. Amen. Let's say the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, the one established by Jesus Christ. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, 
and evermore might we defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who art the author of peace and the lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always what is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is a general intercession. Be mindful. O Lord, of thy people bowed before thee, and of those who are absent through age, sickness, or infirmity. Care for the infants, guide the young, support the aged, encourage the faint-hearted, collect the scattered, and bring the wandering to thy fold. Travel with the voyagers, defend the widows, shield the orphans, deliver the captives, heal the sick. Succor all who are in tribulation, necessity, or distress. Remember for good all those that love us, and those that hate us, and those that have desired us, unworthy as we are, to pray for them. And those whom we have forgotten, do thou, O Lord, remember. For thou art the helper of the helpless, the savior of the lost, the refuge of the wanderer, the healer of the sick. Thou who knowest each man's need and hast heard his prayer, grant unto each according to thy merciful loving kindness and thy eternal love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and the petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. My dear friends, thank you for joining me in prayer. May you have a blessed week.